Hello everyone and welcome back to the Triple Jump podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Peter. And my name is Ashton. When the cat's away, the mice will play. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Ben's not here. He's on his holidays. Oh, lovely. Holly plops. He's having a lovely time in Italia. Yeah, at the he moment. is. I've been following it on his girlfriend's Instagram. Oh, right, yeah. Getting more and more mardi as, like, the more posts and the lovely weather. The and nicer I'm like, and nicer Oh, this things. is so annoying. I've not actually... Uh, I don't check Instagram often enough, but um, I, even without seeing it, I know that he must be having a lovely time because yeah. he's in Italy. So, of yeah. course, he is. Um, so I'm very jealous, but he's probably having a lovely time, so yeah. we can't be too sad. But he's not here. It's just us today. Just us. You're welcome. Yeah. You're so lucky. It'll just be us on uh, After Dark as well, if you're a patron of <laughs> wow. the right tier. Um, but the show must go on. It must. Um, and the show is, in fact, sponsored each and every week by a very real video game sponsor. Mm-hmm. This week, it's me. And I remembered to bring along the sponsor that Ben... Uh, uh, definitely you. really did sort out last oh my phone's going off definitely did sort out last week with a real video game sponsor uh, but it was your turn and so he said I'll send it to you for yeah. next week so it is he real he didn't like my one and he was like I've got a better one and yeah, then, yeah. I've, I've sorted out a deal with a better yeah. product or service because yours was an Astro Bot yeah. something it was um, Last Robert Last Robert yeah it that's right it wasn't good wasn't too hey, good. I thought it was great. Thank you. Um, but Ben has hooked me up this week with a very special sponsor that is also with the Astrobot brand. Whoa. Uh, hey, it's a great game, fun levels, lots of colors, great soundtrack. And that great soundtrack is now available on an official tie-in vinyl record or album of some description. The great soundtrack of Astrobot available for your ears, Astrobops. It is quite good, isn't it? That is really good. It's good, but not real. Oh, oh. Uh, what a shame. They a are shame. they are a bunch of Astro Bops, though. They are. It's an amazing soundtrack. It's really good. Yeah. It's so. a shame it's not real, but we aren't sponsored by... I mean, it could by, be, eventually. It could absolutely be real, but yeah. we're not sponsored by Astro Bops. No. We are, in fact, sponsored by our wonderful patrons over at patreon.com forward slash team triple jump, where you can ask questions to this podcast if you wanted to, and a whole bunch of other things, main menu, rules, boss, early, weirdest and worst games, mm-hmm. and uh, the After Dark podcast, as Peter was saying. There's a couple of other places you can find us on the internet as well. We have a website, triplejad.mup. You can go there to find our YouTube, Discord, Cameo, Twitch, all kinds of things triplejumpshop.com to buy sick and cool merch like this hoodie um sort of like that hoodie but in black Wait, and um my t-shirt stuck to my hoodie. peter just pulls up his shirt and just shows his nipples there we go that you shirt. Can buy my nipples <laughs> or, or half of this shirt yeah is visible yes um there's a few things out this week well there is one thing out this week peter yeah well we've got all the usual stuff out all this week of course but there's out. one special thing out this week which is worst games ever it's crouching tiger hidden dragon <laughs> Um, that was, as Ashton said, available for patrons two days early on Friday. Um, for everyone else, at time of release of this podcast, will be out tomorrow. Or if you're listening or watching a little bit late, it might be out right now. Right now. So go and watch that after you've listened to this podcast, Indeed. not before. Indeed. Indeed. Well, it's time now for question one, Peter. Yes, it is. Um, it's a question from Chris McVeigh, who says, Hi, Bap. It's just Hi, after today. It's just us. Or sorry. par. Pa. Hey, par. While Astrobot is deservedly getting high praise from almost everyone, one person who isn't so keen on it is John Garvin, former creative director of Bend Studio and director of Days Gone. His latest weird Twitter storm has focused on the cameo appearance of the guy from Days Gone as one of the VIP bots you can rescue. I don't want to give known flip-head John Garvin too much attention, but suffice to say he's not a fan of his character only getting to cameo in other games rather than getting a sequel of its own. On this, and this alone, does he have a point? Astrobot is 100% a celebration of 30 years of PlayStation, but is it somewhat disingenuous to market a game on its homages and references to dormant franchises like Ape Escape, Loco Roco, Jack and Daxter, Gravity Rush, Wipeout, etc., when there's no indication those series are being worked on by anyone? Thanks, Chris. Would you like some context? I would love some context, please. Days Gone Dev upset with Astrobot Cameo, according to Gamer Ant. Thank you, Anthony. 
Days Gone creative director John Garvin recently expressed displeasure regarding Deacon's portrayal as an Astrobot character in a promotional art piece. The art shared by Ben Studio showcased Days Gone's Deacon leaning against a palm tree on a beach while watching two puppy bots play with a beach ball. This caused Garvin to suggest that Deacon was being, quote, reduced to promoting Astrobot, which received a response from a dev named Gabriel who defended Ben Studios for its portrayal of Deacon. Gabriel stated the creative director who brought Deacon to life shouldn't want the character to be stored away. This caused Garvin to laugh at the idea he was being harsh, doubling down on his thoughts on Deacon as an Astrobot character. Uh, the two tweets in question, his original one was, Kinda sad that Deke has been reduced to promoting other games. Well done, Ben Studio. Way to protect your legacy. This guy seems fun at parties, doesn't he? He does. And uh, his reply after someone said, hey, calm down, my brother. <laughs> uh, Relax yourself. Which was, that's a quote. They said, calm down, my brother. He's replied and said, haha, I see my character reduced to a cartoon shill promoting some small some small game and I'm being <laughs> harsh. Sit down, my brother. Adults are talking. Some small game, possibly some people's game of the year. Yeah. Possibly at yeah. this point. Um, I don't agree with what he said. Mm. However, yes. I do also feel like I can see why he would be annoyed. Mm -hmm. um, I can see why you'd be a bit upset that your character who is just like, who is an iconic character is currently just a robot in someone else's game as a little cameo yeah i don't think it's a bad thing i think it's great that you know we're still talking about days gone and i think he should be happy that like deacon even got a spot because there was a few people who i who haven't yeah uh, a few characters that you don't see mm -hmm. anywhere in astrobot um and i'm not saying that astrobot is the pinnacle of if you've made it you'll be an astrobot yeah um however like i do understand why he would be frustrated and i do see chris chris's point about whether these franchises that no one's currently working on are like kind of being it's not mocked isn't the right word but like the it's being salt in the wound yeah with these games mm -hmm. um especially ape escape which has kind of got its full own level whole level yeah um in the game with essentially ape escape gameplay in yes it. exactly and the same with loco roco you know there's a bunch of gameplay in there as well that's very similar to loco roco um, I think it's a shame, but I I saw a, like a tweet this week that I can't remember who it was from, but they were like Sony are complaining about like not having enough IPs and like and people not yeah. getting their stuff, and then it's like and then you've got Astrobot which has hundreds of your own IPs in it of games that people love and mm -hmm. want more of, and uh, you are not doing any of those. People were saying like oh Sony would do an amazing Ape Escape game like if this is what we've got for yeah. just a like, quick level then mm -hmm. why not let them have it. I do think it's maybe testing the waters a little bit with certain games to see if they can come back. Like I don't necessarily think Loco Roco has the the balls, if you will, <laughs> yes. to um to come back. Um I just don't think it's kind of gonna hit the way it used to, especially not on PlayStation. I mm -hmm. think you'd have to it'd have to be a Switch game. Yeah. Um, yeah exactly. But I do think that certain other franchises that we saw that are currently not being worked on are definitely kind of given a little bit of spotlight and I'm hoping that maybe maybe we'll see something back from Sony they've seen how well Astrobot has done and yeah. how well loved it is even a shorter more condensed game of these fr like franchises would be welcomed with open arms by mm -hmm. a lot of people yeah I think so too I, I do agree actually with kind of both sides of the argument here which is that I, I don't really agree with the kind of the way that John Garvin has put it or you know overall his kind of attitude towards the 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 issue mm -hmm. uh, but i do think that while it is really nice to play astrobot and see a character or see a reference and think oh that's really nice that they're like celebrating that thing you know uh it's like the the leonardo dicaprio meme where he's pointing at the tv mm -hmm. like i know that one um it it does then it feels like a bit of a not a slap in the face but it's like oh yeah and and this is all we're going to get for the next maybe until the next Astro game is out, basically, because yeah. we've seen a lot of these characters in the previous game. Um, so it's it's almost like PlayStation is saying, we know that you all love this character. That's why we chose it and put it in here. And yet we're not going to give you anything else. Yeah. Um, and, and I agree. I mean, you know, you said it yourself. I agree with the fact that they, 
for example, with Ape Escape, they made a whole level which plays somewhat like an Ape Escape game would. Uh, and so to to have that kind of dangled in front of you and then think that potentially we won't actually be ever getting a proper Ape Escape game mm-hmm. does feel a little, a little uh, I don't know, it can make you feel a bit bitter, I suppose. Um, as, and also, especially with... Uh, the thing that I've been, I, we might talk about Astrobot a bit more later, I think, when we uh, do what we play in. But um, the thing that I've been thinking as I've been playing through this game is that the the kind of the, the technology we have nowadays um, and the processing power and so on, uh, it's like a, a whole new world of mascot platformer style games. You know, you're you're going through Astrobot and you're like. This is mad. Like the first boss fight, I thought, what is going on here? I'm not saying it's the the craziest boss fight boss fight I've ever had in any game, mm-hmm. but in terms of a, a a fun little colorful platformer, you know, compared to the stuff I'm used to playing in kind of like retro gaming, it's uh we've we've come so far and to think that we are now in a position where uh fun little kind of PlayStation characters like your Ape Escapes and your, uh, well, they don't own a lot of the stuff that uh, they used to make that was mascot platformers. But to think that those games now, if they had that kind of budget and technology behind them, you know, what they could produce, Mm -hmm. it kind of just makes you feel like, I really hope they look at this and think, maybe there's something in this genre. Yeah. I mean, Astro Bot is from a 60 person team, was made over Mm -hmm. three years. Yeah. And you think that, like, there's so much focus, and we've said this a lot, on these big blockbuster yeah. games that like spend that take millions to make and years and years and years. And then you are hedging your bets on it doing well, a la Concord. Yeah. But like these kind of games don't have to be absolutely massive. They don't have to be photorealistic. They mm-hmm. have an art style that's interesting and can be 10 to 20 hours long if that and people will be happy with it it's just about the franchises and the gameplay that people love it's just kind of i think is i think we're coming a bit in a bit of a full circle moment here we've kind of evolved out of like the cutesy mascot platformer and we've kind of gone into the photorealistic triple a hardcore area and now i feel like the the zeitgeist of what gamers want is kind of come all the way around and we've seen it a lot with Astro Bot and people loving it is that like we just want something nice and fun and like joyful that we can sink 20 hours into yeah that is like a pleasant experience for everyone who plays it and I'm not saying don't ever give me a hard-hitting story ever again yeah I'm just meaning like I feel like a there's lot of both. there's room for both mm. and I feel like we're seeing a lot more with indies going into that space and doing so well that maybe there is more of a scope for these big companies to to broach in on that side of gaming. Yeah, well. there has been a lot of conversation about the fact that it is this relatively kind of bite-sized experience and you know the yeah. devs of the game themselves have been saying, hey, you know, sometimes you don't want to go to an all-you-can-eat buffet because you might enjoy eating all-you-can-eat for however long, but then the the lasting impression is that you're bloated and you feel a bit sick and you mm-hmm. don't really want to think about food or the food that you just ate. Whereas if you just have a nice little meal and you're like, ah, yes, that was yummy. I can't wait to have that again next time. Yeah. You know, that's that's very much the, the feeling that it has. So... Um, yeah. hopefully it's it's huge success will be enough to encourage sony to at least think about doing more of this fingers crossed Whether they will i don't know because they seem to these big companies seem to make in air quotes evidence-based decisions only in the instances where we don't want them they're like <laughs> oh hell divers i know we should do more like huge multiplayer games as a service yeah. games because yeah. hell divers went really well which it did yeah. fair enough mm-hmm. and then i can just see them looking at astro saying well that was um, it's well, good that, that we did lovely. that anyway let's move hell divers 3 <laughs> or concord or whatever yeah. so yeah, yeah. So fingers crossed Sony and whoever owns the rest of these IPs, because I don't even we don't even really know who they belong to anymore. There seems like there are just random IPs belonging to random places at yeah. this point. So maybe we'll see some more, maybe we won't. And um, I'd love to see some more what Team SOB can do mm-hmm. outside of Astrobot. Yeah. Now, it's a it's a segment that I thought we should try while Ben's not here, because Ben does, is a bit funny about change. 
you know? Right, yeah. And I feel like he, if we try it without him, we can kind of do it as a team together. And when we can it's slowly back. add yeah, it yeah, yeah. We can gradually. Like, to, like work him into being yeah. him into it. Um, it's it's called what we play in. Okay. What we play in time. It's time to talk about what video games we've been playing. Uh, Ashton just said, "Do you want me to do the do, <laughs> do the what we play?" I was like, "So I'll, I'll do it." I've and got then it. I sort of just barely got over the line. <laughs> um, well, I uh, I was away for a long weekend, pretty mm-hmm. much. Uh, so we, we record our podcasts on a Thursday. And last Thursday, I then went to see my parents. Um, well, not my parents. They were Their house was empty. So I went, to, went eat, to see their house, eat their food and use their central heating. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was away until um, Monday. So I didn't play any games over the long weekend. Then on Tuesday, I played some Outlaws because I streamed it. And uh, I said to the viewers, I was like, okay, I'm not going to do any more Outlaws on stream now because I want to actually be able to just play this game now at home on my Mm -hmm. one save file. So that evening later on, I played a tiny bit more Outlaws. I'd been playing it earlier in the afternoon. So I was like, I don't want to play too much. So I played a little bit of that. And then I was like, okay, it's Outlaws time now. For the next few weeks, that's what I'm playing. But Wednesday, I was like... Oh, I better just. A I just quickly. An adorable bot poked his head in. Well, he did, and but it wasn't even like I was like I simply must. I was like I I do really want to play Astro Bot. Everyone's talking about it, and I'm sure we'll be talking about it on the podcast. So I'll just I'll just get, play a couple of hours. Mm-hmm. I'll just play you know two hours so I can just talk about the game. Outlaws are gonna have to wait at this point. <laughs> uh, it's rare that Star Wars gets sidelined by anything in uh, in in my world, uh-huh. but I mean, to be fair, as we were just saying, uh, Astro Bot is a, a relatively bite-sized experience. So I think in the next, you know, probably only take me another three sessions to uh, to complete it. But uh, yeah, um, so I've played a basically I played a tiny bit of Star Wars Outlaws and I've played quite a lot of Astro Bot and I'm having a great time. Um, the completionist in me, the collectathon boy, is um, wanting to uh, get a gold flag on on every level before I move on. Me too. So I'm jumping back in and playing levels several times over. Um, you know, trying to find the secret exits is a little tricky at times. Uh, sometimes I buy the bird. The bird helps me. Sometimes yeah. I don't. Um, For context, if you complete a level, you can go back and get a little bird and then he'll tell you if there's a secret around. Tweet, but only tweet. if it's like really close. Yeah. If, the, if the secret is like quite far away, but you have to get there, it's not always the most helpful thing. No, it's not. It's not it's like not he like, points hey, turn the right time. now. Yeah. There's a thing to go that way. It's just like he cheats if you're right next to it. And the first, the first time I uh, finished, a, I, I um, it was like the third level, I... I completed everything. I found all the little jigsaw pieces and the the bots. Mm-hmm. But then there was the secret exit symbol on the on the overworld saying, oh, you're yeah. still missing something in this level. And I was like, what is that symbol? The game hasn't actually told me yet what that yeah. is. So I jumped in and I was like, oh, there's a little bird here. What's that? So I smashed that open. I thought it was going to give me 200 pounds. And then I realized oh, right, it, okay. it took 200 pounds off me. And I was like, oh, I just paid for this guy. And I didn't even mean to. So I, I smashed the bird open and he was just, flying with me as I was going through the level doing nothing I was like do I just have to escort him to the end or something is that do Mm. do you like buy the bird take him to the end and then it fills in the little swirly symbol so I got to the end of that level for the second time nothing had happened because I'd not found this secret exit not knowing there's a Mm. secret exit in the in the game so then I was like let me just Google what this bird is because that's not done anything then it said oh the bird will will guide you towards stuff uh and uh, it still took me two more playthroughs two of, of that same level to finally find because the third time I went in with the bird I was like okay the bird will will guide me and as you say he doesn't actually do a great deal he'll just sort of if it's like a bot or a jigsaw puzzle yeah. like, you normally he'll tell you but the secret entrance is not super so he did a, a little pulse as I was walking past the thing but I didn't even realize at the time and then I kept going through the level being like the bird's gonna tell me in a minute there's, <laughs> there's something here and then I was like oh it's the exit that's my third run of this level, going in for a fourth. But hey, I st- I'm still enjoying it, mm-hmm. even when I'm doing that, going over and over uh, through the same level. Because... I like accidentally discovered the secret exit the first time. I was like, what is this? Mm-hmm. And uh, Ben had been playing it before me. So he was like, oh, that's the, if you go there, there's like a secret level that it takes you to. And I was like, okay, but like, can I come back? And I was like, yeah, of course you can. Like, <laughs> but like I, the first one I was just stumbled upon mm-hmm. and then I figured out what that symbol was. But I, yeah, I, it doesn't tell you what no, the symbol is. No, it doesn't. That would be one, My probably my one complaint is that it would be nice to just, for it to tell you 
what that thing is yeah. and what the bird does. Yeah. Uh, it just doesn't tell you what they are. But other than that, hey, I thought the overworld as well, the, or the, the sort of the the central planet the where you've site. crashed, the crash site is really cool. When I first got there after completing a few levels, I was like, oh, okay, this is probably just going to be, uh, this looks like the busy work area where mm-hmm. you just have to come and like do do a few things. There's loads to explore in there and like you're, all your little bots are helping you out and helping you climb up things and find all sorts of extra little bits and bobs. So uh, I was pleasantly surprised by that. Mm. Um, so anyway, I'm, I digress. I played a lot of Astro Bot this week and I'm having a great time. I finished Astro Bot this <gasps> week. Congratulations. Yeah, well, 100%. I haven't. Well, no. I haven't done... I've finished everything apart from the Super Master level, right. which is like the final platforming run difficult thing. You know, the like runs that you have to do all in one go? Yes. It's like a big one of those. Right, okay. Um, and I got stuck. Right. Team Asobi, if you're watching... Oh, yeah. There's a level called Splashing Sprint. It's too hard. It's too hard, Okay. It took me hours to finish that level. It was the hours. last thing I had to do before, like, I was wanted to do the final boss. Mm-hmm. Hours. It took me oh, no. so long because, and this is a little tip for everyone, <laughs> you can throw the, like, so you get these ducks that are, like, spewing out water mm-hmm. and you're walking across lava. So they'll, like, oh, right. get rid of the lava. But then you get to the end of the lava and there's a frog with a rocket launcher on its back. Of course. And the homing missiles kept getting me over and over and over again. And I was like, I don't understand what I'm supposed to do. I was getting so angry and I was doing it for ages. <laughs> I left it. I came back to it the next day. I still couldn't do it. And I was like, I do not understand what's going on. And then I Googled it and someone on Reddit was like, FYI, you can throw the duck at the frog. And I was like, this changes everything. Right. So as soon as I learned I could do that, it was like fine. But the first part of that level... I was like ready to fight someone. Mm-hmm. I was like ready to just get up and walk into the sea and never come back because right. I was like so angry about it. <laughs> so I haven't done the Supermaster level yet because of the rage I felt doing that level and I was haven't had time since mm-hmm. I finished it. But I, man, that game's great. There were certain, there was people like the VIP bots. Some of them, I have no idea who they are. Mm-hmm. And I'd be there going, oh, what are you from? <laughs> are you like a, a Bloodborne thing or a Metal Gear guy? Like, who are you? I don't, mm-hmm. who are you? And, and my favorite thing is like all of the bots, they don't have their actual names. No. They have the like Halloween the costume Halloween knockoff costume, yeah. names and it's they, they crack me up. Spinning marsupial. Yeah. Literally has Crash Bandicoot's face. <laughs> it's not even just his hair. It's, yeah. it's, it's just Crash Bandicoot. Yeah. So there's like a few of them I'm like I have no idea who this is Mm -hmm. and uh, I've had to like I had to use a guide once or twice to find the secret exits because like you say they're not always super clear and the the bird doesn't always help Um, so right now all I've got left to do is get the last bits of the gacha Mm -hmm. like claw machine and then also do the master level and I'm like mopping up some of the trophies that you get in the um, kind of end like post boss battle levels. Right. Um, but I, man, that game's great. Mm-hmm. I had a great time with it. And uh, if I can do Super Master level, it will be an experience for us all. And you'll hear about it next week, I'm sure. I have uh, I have time on Saturday. So if you start seeing tweets of rage from me on Saturday, it's because I'm doing the Super Master level. Mm-hmm. I might get mad. Um, but I played that. I also played some Star Wars Outlaws, but like you, I played a bit of it and then Astro Bot arrived and then I've been playing Astro Bot most yeah. of the time. But I'm excited to go back to Star Wars Outlaws. Yeah, me too. It hasn't grabbed me yet, but I also haven't really got out of the tutorial area yet. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of like on the first planet you go to after the the initial kind of mission. And um, like I haven't actually done anything yet because I just haven't gone back to it. Yeah. And I like it. Sometimes it runs a bit like ass. Oh, really? Um, but maybe that's just because, I mean, they've done an update, so maybe that'll fix some of the stuff with it. But sometimes I've noticed it's just real juddery, like it's running at 30 FPS and it's just not, like it's not super smooth. But oh, maybe that is just like my, because uh, I've been watching Ben play it and he hasn't had as many mm-hmm. issues. So maybe it's just because I was playing it kind of really early on. I've only um, had issues in cut scenes with the uh, frame rate. Um, mm. I, I don't think I've had any problems at all in in-game yeah. performance-wise. Yeah, it's not like too bad. I'm, mm. I'm excited to go back and play it. Um, I just, yeah, I've just, Astro Bot's 
my favorite thing ever. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I've played this week is Age of Mythology Retold. Oh. Um, so me and MB were playing that together on um, Sunday night. And he was he, he used to play it when he was young. And so I was like, oh, you can teach me how to play it. Mm -hmm. And he was giving me like the basics and I was just going ham. And I like overtook him by like, tenfold he was Whoa. like he's like you're two ages ahead of me what the hell <laughs> like he'd look over at my screen and i've got like a full town armies like fences all the way around and he's like what the hell is happening oh my here? god he's like i'm barely even yeah built an army yet and i'm like catch up baby <laughs> uh, and then like we played it a few times with like bots um as the like ai enemies mm -hmm. because i'm too scared to play online because they'll just absolutely ruin me and mm, i'll maybe. get sad about it um but yeah, I've been enjoying that. That is good fun. We're going to play some more of that. It's just nice that we can play it together because we can be on a team. Mm -hmm. So we can just uh, like, as a team, kill everyone else. And the bots were like supposed to fight each other, but they just kind of didn't do anything. Right. So um, I think we're going to, he was like, maybe I need to turn the difficulty up. So you might be too good at this. And I was like, more armies, more horses. Sounds like you should be playing online. You might suddenly find some sort of esports career that Maybe. has been lying dormant inside you i'm like absolutely sick of age of mythology yeah um but that game's great it looks great as well and um like the sounds like the music and stuff is really really mm -hmm. good so yeah that's what i've been playing this week brilliant well should we do question two i think we should this comes from connor bennett hey b slash a slash peepers Appers, if Appers. you will. Mm. Um, after the debacle that was the ending of service to the crew, Ubisoft have announced that its sequels, The Crew 2 and The Crew Motorfest, will receive an offline mode. Is this something you'd like to see more live service games offer without massive pressure from the bossaroos first? Would you like some context? Yes, please. Something Eurogamer by Matt Wales. Following Ubisoft's decision to shut down the crew servers early this year, a move made even more controversial when it began revoking players' licensing to the game, Publisher has announced plans to prevent other entries in the open world racing through from suffering a similar fate by retroactively introducing offline modes. Ubisoft de began delisting the crew from the digital storefronts last December, announcing it would be permanently shutting the game's servers down on the 31st of March this year. Unfortunately, it's always online nature meant players didn't lose access to the didn't just lose access to the crew's multiplayer element when the day came, all its single player content became unavailable too. That's bad, yeah. Ubisoft. Yeah. The controversy surrounding Ubisoft's decision led to, revi to revitalize discourse on video game preservation um, and the establishment of Stop Killing Games, an initiative aiming to mount political and legal challenges to the increasingly common occurrence of purchase games being unplayable. Um, five months on, Ubisoft has finally acknowledged players' concerns around access, or rather the complete lack of access, mm. to The Crew in a statement on social media. And while it doesn't sound like there's much hope for the original The Crew... The, the original The Crew's revival, the original, putting the big, at the beginning of your game yeah. is really annoying. Mm -hmm. um, the publisher is at least looking to protect its sequels. This is a from the publisher. We heard your concerns about the access to The Crew games. Today, we want to express our commitment to the future of The Crew 2 and The Crew Motorfest. It then confirmed, an offline mode to ensure long-term access to both titles is in the works, promising more details in the next months. Um... In response to today's news, Stop Killing Games founder and YouTuber Ross Scott, who has been actively campaigning against... Uh, I don't know, have you seen this? No. So um, Ross Scott, I can't remember... I want to say his, his YouTube name is Accursed Farms. That might be wrong. Um, so when the crew was taken offline, he essentially mounted a campaign across like various legal fronts across the world um was this a while ago did we mention this on the podcast we, we talked about it off a of podcast i think i might have mentioned it on a podcast right. a little while ago but yeah. yeah so he was like campaigning all over the place for specifically using the crew as an example but in general looking to put in some legal practices or like some laws that meant you can't just take something off someone just because like once it's theirs it's theirs yeah. um and as had like launched a bunch of different um, kind of what they called petitions around the world, mm -hmm. getting people to sign up for them and like send their MPs and stuff um, information about it, which is super great and um, fantastic. It feels like a, not the most important thing in the world at the time. Yeah. But however, it's really good. And I'm glad that this has kind of got Ubisoft to 
stop doing it a little bit and hopefully this will progress mm, further. Yeah. But he said, the crew too in most sport is getting an offline mode. Hopefully this is in response to the consumer agencies in multiple countries investigating the legality of them disabling the crew one, which was sold as a one-time purchase with no stated expiration date. Mm. So yeah, so this is the problem is that it's belongs to people. It was their game and it was meant to be theirs forever. And it's now not theirs anymore. Yeah. Um, This was like very similar to that comment that was made by someone from Ubisoft taken out of context. Yes, yeah. The gamers should get used to not owning, owning their, their games. games. Yeah. Which was, it was Which out was of context. Which was out of but, context yeah. and, you know, has been used a lot online to justify stuff. Yeah, though. but even if it didn't mean what people are saying it meant, it the the thing that they are saying it, it meant is still an issue. Yes, even it if is that, absolutely. That quote wasn't in relation to it, which is that uh, yeah, you can you can buy something, own it. Um, particularly in in the case of the crew, where it didn't have a, an expiration date, or mm. it wasn't just a. It's, it's slightly. There's an argument to say that you know if it's just a multiplayer only online service game and then the people who are supporting that game the publishers say we're turning our servers off no one's playing it anymore that's one thing that's still an issue of video game preservation mm -hmm. it's not good that that happens but particularly a game that has a single player component to suddenly stop working i mean that's awful really yeah. um and i do think that yeah I, it would be nice for it not to take a load of pressure from the gamers or bossaroos for um, games that, particularly those that do have a, a single player component, to make sure that they have some kind of offline mode. Mm -hmm. All right, it might not be the full experience or the best way to play that game, but uh, it it does just mean that preservation is there. And you would think, well, hmm, I was <laughs> I was going to say you would think that developers and publishers would be you know, would would want there to be some kind of preservation of the product that they've worked hard on and that they care about. But I guess if it's at the expense of having to pay to create offline only modes and mm. put various bits of infrastructure in place, maybe that's not something that, you know, they're, they're more interested in the green than yeah. they are. Uh, oh, yeah, our, our product will be preserved by people who really love it. Um, but yeah, in answer to the question, I think that games should offer this and it shouldn't take a load of pressure from uh, organizations like that to, mm. to get it done. I I agree with the whole, like, if no one's playing your game or if you're, you know, it's become obsolete in many ways and you want to shut down the servers, I can understand that from both a yeah. cost perspective and also just from, like, logic, of course. If mm -hmm. no one's playing it, why are you paying to support a server? However, we have seen in the past fans pick up the servers and run old games yeah. for people who love to play them. And we've seen this happen multiple times with various different games. We've seen like the old Star Wars Battlefront games have been like revamped before the, um, was it the Battlefront, was it Battlefront that came out recently with the three? Yeah, the, yeah. the PS2 versions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sort of 2005 or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. But pre, pre the remaster coming out, there was a, a lot of these games still being run by fans. Mm, yeah. And that's great because people still own the game. So people can still join on these servers that are run by fans. The second you start revoking people's access and removing it from people's libraries that's when it becomes an issue because then that game is completely gone forever mm -hmm. um and no one can play it even if someone was to set up something so that they could play online and i think that is that's where the main issue lies like i feel like live service games i don't necessarily feel like every company has an obligation to always have a server running for every live service or online game that they've ever made. I don't I don't necessarily think mm. that that's a feasible thing to ask of a developer or a no. publisher. However, I do feel like if you can't put in an offline mode or if there is no single player mode in your game, there should be something in place where once you are done with it, that I don't really know if you have to have permission from the game company, I would assume maybe you do, that you should, fans should be able to open their own servers mm -hmm. for these games if they want to. Um, and thus, people still own the games and if people do want to play the games, they have the ability to do it themselves. Yeah. I think that like, it's a shame that it took like this huge backlash and like this whole 
massive scale like campaign from Ross Scott and all of his fans um, to get this to happen. And I'm hopeful that maybe going forward, we'll see this happening a lot more. But like you say, if you've got a game that you can't like, like justify putting the money into producing an offline mode, mm-hmm. then, or like just won't work with an offline mode, then maybe that's where we'll start to see people just removing games. But I just think like, I don't understand why you have to delist it and remove it from people's libraries. We've seen it with Concord this week. Yeah, People's PlayStation libraries, it's being removed. It's from been people's actively PlayStation removed. Libraries. And, you know, obviously at least those people have been refunded. So that's a slightly different issue compared to people who bought the crew yeah. and then eventually the game has just expired and you don't get your money back. But yeah, it, it, yeah, it was an unprecedented move by Sony to uh, a message was coming up on people's screen saying uh, this this game is no longer um, supported as such it has been removed from your library, which mm-hmm. has never happened before um, yeah. as far as I'm aware. So. so yeah, I think that maybe a live service game doesn't necessarily always have to have an, have to have an offline mode, but as long as it's still playable, it should be able to be in people's libraries. I think also the issue with this is that there's a single player mode. Yeah. And if you're taking someone's game away, if it goes back to the discussion of digital and physical media mm-hmm. in that, okay, well, I have the disc, so I'm just going to keep playing it. Cause someone can't come into my house and steal the disc from me. Yeah. Um, but obviously then the issue of, well, day one patches exactly. and yeah. updates and things that will be produced after the fact are gone forever mm-hmm. and you yeah. can't have them anymore. So, mm-hmm. Or, um, I mean, it's the same thing really as day one patches, but as the discs that don't actually have the full mm-hmm. game on them, full stop. It's not just a patch to fix things on day one. It's yeah. some of the content is you have to download. I believe early uh, prints of the Re- Spyro Reignited trilogy only had Spyro 1 on it and 2 and 3 were fully downloaded off, off the internet. I think later they released a version that had everything on the disc. But yeah, um, yeah if you have an early copy of that, if you were to uh, plug it into a new console uh, now, I mean, fortunately, the, the game is still supported. But in, in a few years' time, maybe, you might be stuck um, mm. with your with your disc, an actual physical disc that doesn't work. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, now it's time for something a little bit strange. Mm, uh, a little bit um, headline making. Yes. It's time for weird news. Mm. It's weird news time, time for some weird video game news. If you want to get a shout out in this segment, make sure you submit news to the relevant post that goes out on a Wednesday. Wednesday. But to guarantee a shout out in weird news, you have to become a podcast producer, just like... Just like Chip Thompson's Thumbs. G.Y. Goliath. Nexus Polaris. Nicole Hansen. Blake Thomas. Gabrielle Philippink. David Cam. Eric Siu. Great Giggity. Michael Pendlebury. Katie Garrett. Huge Arse. Marley. And Big Money Bobby Vegas. Mm. <laughs> we got to do some different names today. We did. Thank just the you, two podcast producers. Welcome, David Cam. Is that a new one? Yes. Yes. It is. Welcome, David. Thank you very much. Uh, I've got some weird news. Oh, do you? That's it good. It was sent by flipping everyone, oh this one. Oh, my God. It was sent on Twitter by Chip at CT Thumbs. We know that one. Yeah. Chris. Uh, and also Ryan Swartz and Lloyd Williams on Facebook, both of them top fans. <gasps> no relations. And relations. And relations. Um, IGN.com we go to for this one, although I think we had various write-ups mm-hmm. submitted. Um, written by Wesley Yin Pool, who says, Rockstar tells Rockstar to go flip yourself. That's after- Rock Space Star tells Rockstar one word. Indeed, yeah. I I would have clarified, but uh, yeah, you're right. Rock Space Star tells Rockstar all one word to go flip yourself after extremely low offer to use hit song in GTA 6. The little subheading is just wasn't tempted. Full stop. Hmm. <laughs> A founding member of British synth pop band Heaven 17 has alleged Rockstar offered three writers of hit song Temptation $7,500 each for its use in Grand Theft Auto 6, a figure he's flat out rejected. Martin Ware, founding member of Heaven 17 and before... And before then, it says, I think it's meant to say before then, synth pop pioneers, the Human League, oh, we know that one, tweeted to tell Rockstar. Yes, we know that one. We know that one from the 1980s. Yeah. 
Tell, uh, told Rockstar to go flip yourself after allegedly receiving what he called an extremely low offer to use 80s classic Temptation in GTA 6. I was recently contacted by my publishers on behalf of Rockstar Games regarding the possibility of using Temptation on the new GTA 6, Ware said. Naturally excited about the immense wealth that was about to head my way, I scrolled to the bottom of the email regarding the offer. It was $7,500 for a buyout of any future royalties from the game forever. To put this in context, Grand Theft Auto 6 grossed, I think he means Grand Theft Auto 5, grossed, wait for it, $8.6 billion. Ah, but think of the exposure. Go flip yourself. IGN has asked Rockstar for comment. Which no, one? No comment. Well, yes. Um, the company. Yeah. Uh, Where's tweet includes a figure for money made by GTA 6, which obviously isn't out yet, says IGN. Predecessor GTA 5 is the second best video game of all time with an eye-watering 200 million copies sold. So perhaps this figure relates to an estimate earnings of that game. Um, but Rockstar's parent company, Take-Two, has not actually disclosed a GTA-specific revenue figure. So I don't know where he's pulled that out from, but it sounds about right, to be honest, mm. $8 billion. I wouldn't mm -hmm. be surprised. No. Uh, the article continues, but basically... Um, they offered him not much money, and he said no. Known billionaires asked a, an actual legitimate rock star to use their, it hit, you know, a fairly famous song in a huge game that's going to sell millions of copies and said, we'll give you less than $8,000 for it. Mm-hmm. Go flip yourself. Go flip yourself indeed. Mm. Um, I have some weird news. Mm -hmm. It was submitted by uh, at the Lloyd W90 on Twitter yeah. and James Matthews, no relation top fan on Facebook. Comes from Zach Zweizen by Kotaku. Oh, comes from Kotaku by Zach Zweizen. <laughs> um, Funko Fusion's Mecha Colonel Sanders is locked behind a $25 chicken paywall. Sorry, what? Don't worry, normal Colonel Sanders is included in the upcoming game for everyone. Here he is, says Becca, Colonel Sanders. Oh my God, there he is. Oh, he's got like an Iron Man heart. No, I think that's his, he's got like a big gun on his arm. Oh, it's, all oh right. I thought it was in the middle of his I chest. I too thought it was an mm. Iron Man thing, no. Um, Funko Fusion's latest character reveal is KFC mascot, founder, and actual human being, Colonel Sanders. Colonel Harland David Sanders passed away over 40 years ago. Rip. And if you eat enough KFC chicken, you can get a special version of the late fast food icon in a mech suit. Really. It's what he would have wanted. It's what he would have wanted. Mm. Last year, we were introduced to Funko Fusion, a third-person action game starring Funko Pop figures from different franchises and brands, like The Thing, like the Thing Back to the Future, and Jurassic Park. Funko Fusion created by the some former Lego dev... Uh, some former Lego game dev... Zzz? maybe, launched launches later this week. And to get people, uh, let's say, excited about the upcoming game, KFC and developer 1010 Games have announced a bizarre crossover. On September 9th, uh, 1010 Games and KFC released a short trailer showing off Colonel Sanders as he appears in Funko Fusion. Why, you ask? I don't know. Here's why. At one point in the trailer, Sanders shoots the alien monster from the thing with pieces of fried chicken that he launches out of a striped red and white KFC bucket. This is real. This is happening right now. And you can't stop it. Okay. In press in a press release about KFC Funko about the KFC Funko crossover, 1010 Games inc explained that there will be three versions of Colonel Sanders in the game. The basic white suit version will be included in the base game. The chef outfit variant will be available for uh, available free to KFC Rewards members, whatever KFC that is. KFC Rewards members. And finally, if you want to unlock the mech suit variant of Colonel Sanders, a real man who once walked this earth, <laughs> Zach wanted to know that this was a real guy. Yeah. Um. You'll need 250 KFC reward points. What is a KFC member's, like, what is a reward member and how do I get reward points from For a KFC? minute there, I thought you were going to say, you'll need 250K. FC. No, that $250,000 yeah. to unlock it. So the 250 KFC reward points is about $25 worth of chicken. Wow. I'd make a joke at this point about how Sanders is spinning in his grave, but the dude's likely used to it by now. KFC have been shameless in turning Sanders into a copra-owned cartoon mascot. Remember the dating game that they made? Yeah. Or the horrible romantic film? Yeah. Honestly, compared to that flip, this Funko Fusion crossover is almost cute in comparison. Almost. Almost. So you need to buy £25 worth of chicken and be a, a KFC rewards member... 
to get Mecca Colonel Sanders in the Funko Fusion game. See, I have zero interest in the Funko Fusion game, but now that I've heard that in the trailer, Colonel Sanders shoots chicken at the thing. (laughs) I mean, that sounds great. Do you want us to watch the video? If you like, yeah. Just see the moment that this happens. Where is it? It's in the article. Um, The KFC Colonel Sanders reveal trailer. World premiere. Oh, it's just a reveal trailer for him. Yeah, it's not even the game. It's just a character that. Hold on. Why are you not? Okay, here it is. Okay, we'll we'll do description. So we're on different worlds of Funko Fusion. There's there's He Man. -Man. There's um, Uh, some other guy. Here he comes. There's a there's his KFC gun. And it's it's panning around KFC. Yeah. He has just got a bucket that's facing forwards and chicken is coming out of it. It just said the word licking finger, on the screen. It's finger licking good. Finger licking good. Yeah. Oh, that was it. It's you very brief, brief. Briefly saw him shooting the thing. Yeah. With the KFC bucket of chicken. Yeah. Well. <sighs> what a world we live in. What a capitalist nightmare we inhabit. Mm-hmm. Isn't yeah. it fun? It's time now for something else. Yes. Please God. A very large, big discussion. Big discussion time, time for the big video game discussion, which this week comes courtesy of Richard Major, who Hi. says, all right, Pa, all how right? did you know? We were, It was just us. Did we mention that Ben was going on holiday? Maybe Ben mentioned he was going on holiday. Maybe. Uh, that PS5 Pro, huh? £700. And then it says Simon Miller voice. Or £800 if you want to get disc drive about this. And Simon Miller voice. <laughs> Who's it for? Isn't it just doing what they said the regular PS5 was going to be doing back during the 2019 reveal event? Haven't they only just started making PS5 games rather than PS4 games in a PS5 box? Madness, Sony's hardware team are a bit lost right now, aren't they? Uh, Yours, Richard Major. Yours, Richard Major. Thank you, Richard Major. Um, Well, I've got... So, so for context, for those who, if this news has passed you by, the PS5 Pro has been revealed. Yeah, we had a 10-minute uh, tech presentation on Tuesday. And a blog post. And they, a blog post. They love a blog Don't post. Don't forget about the blog post. Yeah. Um, it was run by, what was that man's name? Mark Cerny. Mark Cerny. Mm, yeah. The man. Real human being. Needs a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to get out of the 60s. Yeah. Love him. Um, lovely it, man it was it, I mean he is a lovely man but also it was a bit it was a bit like a glassy it was like an animatronic <laughs> delivering the the uh, it was like being on the It's a Small World ride yeah it was yeah um, but hey he told us all about the new PS5 and I'm going to tell you about it now as well um, so some features uh, that, they've taken this straight from the blog post um, update upgraded GPU with PS5 Pro we're upgrading the GPU uh, to one that has 67% more compute units than the current PS5 console and 28% faster memory Overall, this enables up to 45% faster rendering for gameplay, making the experience much smoother. We've got advanced ray tracing. We've added more powerful ray tracing that provides more dynamic reflection and refraction of light. This allows the rays to be cast at double and at times triple the speeds of the current PS5 console. And thirdly, AI-driven upscaling. We're also introducing PlayStation Super... Sorry, PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution. The Pisser. Or Pisser. <laughs> Uh, an AI-driven upscaling that uses a machine learning-based technology provides super sharp image clarity by adding an extraordinary amount of detail. I'm honestly, like, the most shocking thing about that sentence is that I thought the second S in PSSR stood for PlayStation. It yeah, you'd think play so. PlayStation something, something. Yeah, it should really be PSSSR, really. But then people think you're trying to summon a cat. Yeah. Um, it continues, other enhancements are PS5 Pro Game Boost, which can apply to more than 8,500 backwards compatible PS4 games playable on the PS5 Pro, which may stabilize or improve the performance of those games and uh, PS5 games as well. Enhanced image quality for PS4 games is also available to improve the resolution on select games. And the PS5 Pro will also launch with the latest wireless technology, Wi-Fi 7. Wi-Fi 7. In territories supporting this standard. VRR and 8K gaming are also supported. Uh, the price 
If that's uh, the price. what you want to know, it's a big old 700 US dollars, 700 great British pounds. We don't get any discount for having a stronger currency. Uh, 800 euros and... 119,980 Japanese yen, including tax. Uh, it comes with a 2 terabyte SSD, DualSense wireless controller, and a copy of Astro's Playroom pre-installed. Um, and it's available as that's purely for the diskless console with the option to purchase the currently available disk drive for PS5 separately. That costs £100. Uh, and the metal stand that they had for the vertical... Uh, position shown in the video that costs twenty five pounds. I believe it comes with the terrible <laughs> plastic stand, which is my least favorite <laughs> bit of gaming anything I've ever owned in my entire life. It's rubbish. Um, I think it still comes with that, but if you want the fancy metal ring, yeah, then you have to pay twenty five pounds. Coming November twenty four. Mm -hmm. um, pre orders begin September twenty four. Now, really now. Right. That was I'm a gonna, lot. I'm going to say something crazy right now. Yeah. I need them to stop talking about graphical fidelity. Yep. Because games physically can't look any better than they currently do. <laughs> yeah. Like he's showing me a side by side and my brain's going, these are the same pictures. It was like a spot the difference game from yeah. when you were a kid, but harder. But harder. <laughs> like I... No, that they, the whole thing they want to get rid of like the having to choose between performance and quality mode, and I get that. That is annoying. However, I feel like we have reached the pinnacle of what games can look like at the moment. We said this a few times. I feel like graphically, there's not much more that we can push out of games without like your dad looking over the shoulder and being like, "That looks like a movie." Do you know mm. what I'm saying? So I feel like I don't care if it's like. Even it's gonna look even ama more amazing. I was like, it's not looks the same, babe. It looks the same. The only time I felt like it looked really, like genuinely, really good, and I felt like there was a an obvious difference between even the PS5 and the PlayStation 5 Pro was when they showed the Horizon Forbidden West footage. Um, but again, that game already looks beautiful on a yeah. PlayStation 5, and I would be perfectly happy to play it on a PlayStation 5, and like that's it, it's mm -hmm. done. Um, I see why they're making this. However, there's no games coming out for it. We've got no games on the horizon from PlayStation at the moment. We've got no idea what they're doing next. They keep complaining about, you know, they, they've not got anything. They talk about not having enough IPs. We talked about this earlier. Like, we haven't got anything on the horizon from Sony at the moment. We haven't had a showcase, like a proper showcase from them this year. We haven't got any idea about the next game that they're making. They've not got any big blockbuster hits on their way with Spider-Man's done, God of War's done, Horizon's done, Final Fantasy, we're not getting another one of those for two more years. Like it's, there's nothing coming out mm -hmm. for the PlayStation 5 at the moment. Yeah. And like Richard said, we've only just started getting PlayStation 5 games. Yeah. Like we've only just started getting games that use the PlayStation 5 to its like limit. Mm -hmm. And even then, like I don't feel like we're pushing the PlayStation 5 past what it currently can handle. Do you, know yeah. I mean? you know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like we're at the level where it's like, man, if only this console was better, mm -hmm. then it yeah. would be different. Yeah, we're middle of the generation now at the moment, which is, I mean, that's the time when they do bring out these half steps. But um, I agree. There was a graphic going around on Twitter, I, I guess in response to this, or maybe it was just I happened to see it, but uh, it was talking about how uh, in gaming history, when you doubled the number of triangles or polygons that uh, a model could have... Um, in the early days, doubling from, you know, uh, 300 triangles to 600 is a, a huge jump. If you look at, like, this blocky thing that is is almost just a cube uh, compared to when you double that, there's actually, you can see some facial features and so on. And then it showed it, like, doubling and doubling over time. And eventually you get to the point where there are so many polygons that... The, the jagged lines that are there are so small that when you then, you know, half the jaggedness of that, it's, it was so small to begin with that you couldn't really see the difference. Mm -hmm. So there is a kind of a, not quite a critical mass in terms of game improvements. I'm sure that in uh, 50 years or 100 years, things will look noticeably better. And I think there are places we probably can go eventually. But at the moment, I agree with you that I would prefer that uh, things 
ran the way they are currently intended to run in terms of visual fidelity, but just at top performance mode. Mm. Don't now add loads more features and like, oh, here's more ray tracing and here's like even higher resolution and and all of this stuff. Because surely now the console is going to have to work harder to make that stuff work properly. Yeah. You know, I would much prefer that they said, right, or... All, all the games that you've been seeing and playing as they are in, in fidelity mode, they're now just going to run seamlessly. Well, I assume um, that what they're, what they're, this is, is that they're making the PlayStation 5 Pro run the graphics stuff easier yeah. so that it makes the actual game running stuff not have to work as hard to pick up the slack from the graphics. Yeah, yeah, that's However, right. However, I do agree with you, and I do feel like a lot of the focus was on, like, graphically, it's going to look amazing. But mm-hmm. really, like, what, like you're saying, it's it's more the gameplay and, like, the not 30 FPS and the juddering and the, yeah. the issues that we've encountered the last few years. I do feel particularly with, I know, some people don't know what ray tracing is. They don't quite understand exactly what it what it is uh, particularly if you're not in in the circle that we are or if you're not into your games and your and mm-hmm. your tech um i understand ray tracing as a concept i i don't care about it at all like i he when they did the ray tracing and they showed some i assume it was gran turismo or something there was some driving happening and i could see the cars reflected in the metal of the other cars and i was thinking okay yeah that's a that's a real simulated actual reflection on there mm-hmm. I would not be looking at that when I'm driving a car. I'm not looking at the windows when I'm swinging through New York as Spider-Man. I'm just not doing it. Yeah. And I personally would rather that resources went elsewhere in terms of development of the technology rather than improving uh, things like ray tracing. And as, as well, you know, so few people have 8K TVs. Mm-hmm. We don't need 8K, 8K support right now. I mean, you know, I suppose it's nice that it's there for people who do have those TVs. I know quite a few people who don't even have a 4K TV. I don't even know if I have a 4K TV. I don't have a 4K TV. Um, I think, does Ben have a 4K? He, he's the person who's most he likely might, to have he, one, but... They have two tellies in their living room like we do, and I I think one of them might be. Possibly. I think but, maybe mine might be, but I'm not sure, mm-hmm, actually. Yeah. Um, so, you know, personally, I, I mean, you're right. Like, the, the tech improvements they've made here will go towards uh, performance mm-hmm. you know it's not just oh well, it's going to look better but now it's going to perform even worse but really i yeah i i would rather that they just came at this purely from the angle of like look things don't need to necessarily look that much better anyway what we have done here is like make improvements that mean your fidelity mode games are going to run at 60 fps which mm-hmm. as richard major says they kind of said that it would have been doing that from the start and it hasn't been i don't yeah. think i've played well, I, I might have played a, a few games since the PS5 launched where I can run it in fidelity mode and I actually get 60 FPS out of it. Yeah. Um, and yeah. even then, like, yeah, I, I I would love to not have to choose between, like, all of the effort people have put in to make a game yeah. look beautiful and, ha- like, halving that so that I can run it at 60 FPS. That would be great. But like Richard said, that was kind of what we were told was going to be happening mm-hmm. with the playstation 5 and i know that obviously like the longer the playstation 5 is out the more it's going to get pushed and the more like it's going to be made a bit more difficult to hit those marks however like we've just i feel like we've just entered the era of the playstation 5 yeah. game and that's saying something considering like we haven't had that many solely PlayStation 5 games. The only game that I have ever felt uses the PlayStation 5 and everything that it comes with to like the best it can possibly be is Astro Bot. Yeah. There is no other games that Sony have put out. There is no other games that any Sony first party studios have put out that use the PS5 and all of its capabilities to the standard at which they have created it because they still even now are producing games for PlayStation 4 as well, which is fine. Like if you have a PlayStation 4, that's great for you, Mm -hmm. but it just means, like we said before, it's holding back the remit of what a PlayStation 5 game could be because you're too busy also trying to make sure it runs on PlayStation 4 without any major adjustments. Um, I just, I feel like also... 800 pounds with the yeah. disk drive is absolutely insane. To leave it to Jeff Keighley to be like, well, actually, if you were looking at inflation, it would be about the yeah. correct amount of money. And I was like, shut up, Jeff. Shut up, Jeff. Be quiet. Um, but it's it's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like 
there is nothing that is selling me on the PlayStation 5 Pro because I, there is nothing that I feel like, there's no market which I feel like it's hitting. Yeah. Like people aren't begging for a more powerful PlayStation 5 because you're not even seeing the PlayStation 5 be pushed to its limit. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing games made for it, pushing the, the console and pushing the boundaries of what the PlayStation 5 can do. We're also, we haven't got any games coming out in the next 12 months that are like, oh man, must get a PlayStation 5 Pro to run this. It looks amazing. I'd love to play it at the best I could possibly play it. Yeah. Um, and I know that people were saying like, oh, well, you know, if you want to buy a gaming PC, that's going to cost you more than £700. And then like people arguing back being like, well, I can you play games on my PC, do my taxes, edit my audio, like yeah. do a bunch of other stuff where I can't do that on a PlayStation 5. It's just for playing games. Mm -hmm. And I feel like seven, £800 in the cause he lives. Yeah. It's just That's the thing, you know, it, it is adjusted for inflation. It's not it's not the most expensive we've ever seen from PlayStation, but no. there's a cost of living crisis uh and then you're also paying so much for video the games themselves nowadays, which again, if you were just for inflation, they're not like extortionate compared to previous generations, but again, there's a cost of living crisis on. So mm -hmm. you're paying a, a fair whack for a console, then a fair whack each time when you want to buy games. And the other problem is now, uh, because this is only available at in its base form without a disk drive, a lot of people will be forced, in a way, to, to pay an extra 100 quid for the disk drive if they want to still play some of their games that they have been buying mm -hmm. physical yeah. uh, because so far they might have had a PlayStation 5 with a disk drive. I know some people have a digital-only one. Yeah, but, um, mine's got a disk drive and I've got yeah. loads of PlayStation 5 games. I'm PlayStation 4 games on disk yep. and I wouldn't bother getting a console that doesn't have a disk drive no. because on the off chance that I wanted to get a disk for a game, like, why would I bother... I'm not paying a hundred pounds to be able to play a game that's going to cost me seventy quid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, um, <sighs> Ben will probably get one. Yeah, <laughs> and then we'll hear from him what it's like. I suppose he will. Yeah, he's but done I that before. Did, like, did he get a pro like uh, a PS4 Pro when I it? I don't remember if you got it. I don't know if you got it immediately. Release, I think he got but, one um, eventually. Yeah, but, I'm not sure. I don't. Yeah. I'd like. Would you get one? I mean, I, I, certainly, I'm not going to just get one no. now like as they be become available and I'm, I'm even debating whether if my ps5 packed up and i was like oh you know i need to replace that would i buy a pro or would i just mm. buy a cheaper well they're selling PS5? refurbed playstation yeah, fives now as well mm -hmm. like you can they'll sell it back to sony and then they'll give you um a refurbed yeah or you can buy a refurbed one if you wanted to people were saying like oh exchange a playstation 5 for a playstation 5 pro yeah i'd get like maybe quid. 300 pounds my playstation 5 it was like the og 2020 model mm -hmm. and like it's pretty you know it's, it's four years now it's got a lot of use out of it i don't imagine i'd get enough money to even like cover half the cost yeah. of a playstation 5 pro mm -hmm. so yeah i just feel like i feel like again with sony we've seen so many hardware misses and yeah. like confusion over the last few years i just i don't know what they're doing it's been such a roller coaster for sony the past month oh we had God. concord which is like a, a, an unmitigated disaster mm -hmm. uh then astrobot which people are have been singing its praises yeah. and it's I, I certainly for a time i guess it's probably still the case it was the highest rated game of the year oh it still is yeah still yeah. is yeah um and then they've nosedived it well I, I think it's probably more mixed reaction. Some people are probably really excited yeah. about the PS5 Pro, but I think for I a lot of people... I haven't seen a lot it's... of com like, positive discourse. No, on. I haven't. Um, the price is, you know, very off-putting. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, do, do, we, do we need this? Really? Yeah. Do we really, really need this? Other than I want my games to run the way that you promised they would do from the beginning. Um, the games that I have on disc, so I don't have to pay 100 quid to put them into this new machine. You know, mm. it's not... For me, it wasn't super big, exciting. Well, it was big news, but it wasn't good, exciting news for me. 
No. No. No, I agree. What do you think? Mm. Are you getting a PlayStation 5 Pro? Are you going to call us Xbox in the comments and say we don't know what we're talking about? Yeah, until next week when, until we, next say, when we talk about isn't Astro great. Yeah. The, the PlayStation have done something wonderful there and then we're Sony Bronies. And then we're Sony Ponies. I call them Bronies now because yeah. I said it by accident like a couple of weeks ago and yeah. now I can't can't stop. Well, let us know what you think about everything we've talked about today in the comments below. Yep. Pete's going to tell you where you can find us all over the internet. You can find us at uh, youtube.com and twitch.tv, both forward slash team triple jump. Of course, YouTube is home to all of our videos, but you can find us streaming on Twitch for the most part and occasionally on YouTube on special occasions. And if you've got Amazon Prime, you're paying for a big bundle of products and services, one of which is a Twitch sub. So you can redeem that against us at no extra cost and get all the benefits of being a subscriber, uh, but it uh, won't cost you anything more. It's also sub September, isn't it, at the moment? Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. So you can, I think it's 30% off uh, subs? Something like that. Or is it 50%? I think it's 30 For some reason, I've got a three in my head. It's a discount. So. It's a discount. So maybe uh, maybe sub to us if you're not already. And uh, you can also find us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok, all.com forward slash Team Triple Jump. Patreon.com forward slash Team Triple Jump if you'd like to support us. There's all kinds of things over there. And our website is triplejet.mup. Please go there to find our cameos, our Discord, our Twitch, our YouTube. Everything's over there. Mm. Find out what's going on. And why not leave a five-star review on your platform of choice? It helps appease the algorithm. Yes, it does. It tells the algorithm that you love us and then it tells other people that we're good too. Yeah, and we're that's lovable. that's nice. Mm. Um, just enough time for this week's sponsor, Peter. Which uh, comes to us courtesy of Ben Potter. Mm -hmm. um, hey, you love that soundtrack? I do. She does. We all do. Listen now to Astro Bops, available at all good HMVs. Very good. Yeah. Thanks so much for listening slash watching, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.